In 2019, Cyclone Idai devastated Southern Africa. Three countries were hardest hit. These were Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. 650 people lost their lives whilst an accounted property was damaged. Most people lost not only their homes, but also their ways of earning incomes and daily living were affected. People's lives got disrupted. In Malawi, the government, through the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, a body mandated to mitigate effects of disasters, sounded an SOS. There was a rapid humanitarian response to the call from both local as well as international organizations to help people recover. The most notable response came from the UN family which included the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. UNDP resident representative Shigeki Kumatsubara says, in any emergency, it is important to help people not just recover from the disaster, but rather recover better. Against this background, he says, UNDP felt compelled to take advantage of the expertise of all these stakeholders to the pertinent of the recovery project, hence the action. This is a great opportunity to really demonstrate, walk the talk and demonstrate how things could be done to take care of the risks, but then turn them into the positives for the future. So we may have a little bit little influence on global phenomena, and we may be on the receiving side of the impact of climate change. But then Malawi has talents and Malawi has good hardworking people. And if we can demonstrate that we can produce more by doing things slightly better, that that could inspire our friends in Malawi to start to do the similar thing all over the country. With 2.3 million United States dollars funding from the government of Japan, the above-mentioned organizations went into action. The first footprint of the response was registered here in Zaoni, Zomba, in an area which was one of the hardest hit and had people staying in dilapidated structures which are not fit for human habitation. It all started with a structure like this one modest one-bedroom house, yet quite durable, built with specifications to last a lifetime or indeed outlive the occupants. A total of 100 houses have been built around Zomba district, a development that has brought smiles on the faces of the recipients like the ones in this village. Ethel John lost her house due to the Cyclone Idai catastrophe and she was left destitute for more than a year. She says her life has now been completely transformed after receiving the new accommodation under the Disaster Resilient Housing Scheme. Ethel John is not a loan beneficiary, as the facility has also been extended to a lot more, including people with disabilities. Mr. Sinjan here is a perfect example of how the Disaster Recovery Project has transformed what was there before. In the Ningo Umbera Manja Kupazi with her, Mufamini and again the Zimenez. Yes, Munguamu. Suzy put out in the motto. A calling at Yakaka, whom paper, calling you, whom paper go bass. As a calling a kumoto queer. In the one dichi Kula Munguamini, Waposera Balianga, Waposera Mai, Waposera Tate, Nanga Tate and Ganadi Bangi. Baribi. With a disability, he struggled to get access to his old house, let alone 
sanitation facilities. Today, he is a beneficiary of a house which is disability friendly, with the sanitation facilities which have brought dignity to him. This has also lessened the burden to those who had to attend to him all the time to mitigate his disability. Another key element of the project is that it focuses on making people become self-reliant rather than giving them handouts. Here, the emphasis was therefore given to a business component to enhance the income levels of the community through establishment of the notable communal markets. Before the rehabilitation of the market, people had no places to do business as the old market had been destroyed by the cyclone. This denied the people of the much needed income for their day-to-day -day living. Those who opted to still carry their business activities in the old destroyed market did so under squalid conditions, especially when it rained and flooded. Now under this component, the Zaoni market in Zomba has been rehabilitated and therefore transformed from its original dilapidated form to a market with modern durable facilities. These include a toilet, a borehole, and a proper garbage disposal site. Here, organic waste gets transformed into manure for agricultural use by the community members. This has improved the sanitation element around the market, and its general outlook has been given a facelift. Thanks should go to Habitat for Humanity for providing the expertise to build the dwelling units and for rehabilitating the market structures under the project. The organization involved the local artisans under the skills transfer principle, which has helped them gain skills to become self-reliant. Here, one year down the line, the local artisans are using the knowledge gained to construct disaster resilient structures in the area capable of withstanding the devastating effects of heavy rains, floods, and stormy winds. These artisans have become construction business magnets in the area as they are now being engaged in projects sourced within and beyond the area like the construction of this mosque here. Kamangidu kamene kakondi kakusiana ndi kamene kamangidu ya nokari kwa kuti panopa chifuwa cha ngozi zomwe za chitika last of last year ya ndi amazi foundation the community has also, under the project, been encouraged to grow a variety of drought-resilient crops as part of a requirement in the disaster-resilient project. These are crops that are, in turn, taken to the rehabilitated markets for sale to increase their income levels. They are also necessary for their nutritional intake levels. This is Palombe. Another area where a helping hand similar to the one in Zaone, Zomba, was also extended. Palombe is another flood-prone area where Cyclone Idai poked its ugly herd. The devastation was equally bad and had also rendered the community here destitute. But under this disaster resilient housing scheme, a further 100 housing units have also been constructed and are sporadically spaced around the affected villages within the Palombe district. The units are similar in nature to the ones constructed in Zomba Zaone area, comprising one-bedroom dwelling units and a toilet. This has also alleviated the suffering of the flood-affected community, who sounded very grateful to this kind gesture demonstrated by the housing scheme. <laughs> Dimazi 
ndiye anali bempavu kuti swa kaumba zidina kuti amange chani chikondi wa ulumara wa ulumara mwingi sofa kuti ngango kala kumango kala mwamwai ni mpavu ya mungu ndamini kapa kuti muto oita ni kuti ari kuboma ndi tinanyamu kakafika kumene kuti ndiye kufika kuya pamene kati kuti mpawi wangu kati fotokozereni ndi tinakani na mungu munga nyemera ndazi tichabwe nifita Mama I watch it, but I say, I don't have to know where I am. I'm going to go to the house. 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 Over time, she got married and had two children. One day, her husband just left and never returned. She was left without any steady income and struggled alone to look after her two siblings alone. Cyclone Idai came and blew her house, reducing it to a rubble. She stayed in a kitchen shack for months on end. Without a steady income, life became difficult. The community, aware of her fate, enlisted her to be a beneficiary of the Disaster Resilient Housing Scheme that UNDP, with the funding from Japan, was undertaking. An equally modern market of the same design has also been constructed on the base of Mitchell's Hills at Migori. The market, just like the one in Zaoni, boasts of modern facilities including a pit latrine, necessary for the convenience of the market goers and users. A borehole within the vicinity completes the commendable picture of the sanitary requirement provided by the project at the market. There is also an irrigation scheme here in Palombe at the Namisangwani. Here, in this 12-hectare irrigation scheme, farmers used it to use water cans for irrigation. Due to climate change, it was hard to draw water from the shallow boreholes as they used to easily dry up. UNTP, through the Inclusive Disaster Recovery Program, upgraded the scheme to be solar-powered. They dug deeper wells where solar-powered submersible pumps are embedded into the boreholes. The water is then hoisted into storage tanks that hold 20,000 liters each. Using gravity, the water is then used for irrigation. The farmers here have agreed on an arrangement that allows every farmer access to the irrigation on agreed days. The scheme is benefiting 140 farming families, which translates to 700 beneficiaries. The whole scheme can produce about 60 metric tons, which can be used to supplement their households. And then when the winter season ends, they can grow vegetables, especially tomatoes, uh, onions, and uh, dry beans, whose yields, if we talk about dry beans and uh, assuming they have grown the whole scheme, they can be producing around 36 tons. This is Palombe District Commissioner's Office, which was instrumental in coordinating the core aspects of the UNDP project and all relief efforts at district level. District Commissioner Roderick Matiauma says this is the first time a project has brought a lasting solution to the devastated communities. He praises the project for providing the most needed elements to the affected communities, especially Houses. When we documented the kind of the impact and the devastation that we experienced in Palombe, 
we indeed share the same with the government through the Department of Disaster Management Affairs. And uh, the case uh, is always be, uh, they also share the same with the partners. And uh, we're privileged that um, we saw UNDV coming to the district, introducing a partner in the name of Habitat for Humanity. They actually concentrated on uh, building uh, safer houses to those most vulnerable. And to me, that was one of the most um, uh, exciting uh, direction because uh, all along when we have calamities of this nature, none has come forward to construct a house. Department of Disaster Management Affairs says, though a focus on mitigating the short-term effects of disasters is necessary, emphasis now should be placed on prevention. Uh, the National Resiliency Strategy, which has also been embedded into the uh, Malawi 2063, uh, is looking at uh, for us to come up with a, a sustainable uh, way of managing the environment, uh, which will reduce uh, these occurrences of this disaster. That's the first thing. So you are talking about risk reduction. Uh, so we need to, to, to look at our first priority as a risk reduction. A stitch in time saves nine, so goes the old adage. What UNTP, Habitat for Humanity, don't mind other stakeholders have done in Zomba and Palombe deserve a high level of praise as they moved in just on time to build the suffering community out of the devastating effects of Cyclone Edai.